boys and girls, students of secondary school and Dharma classes, parents, grandparents, and teachers of Dharma classes. Good morning. May you all be well, happy, and peaceful. Now, we are going to have a presentation titled Life Lessons for Happy Living. A very important and useful presentation because this can help you to live a more peaceful and happy life, which everybody wants. Now, this presentation has the text in English and Malay, but the narration is in English, together with the explanation. Now, as usual, we will launch the PowerPoint and I will go over each of the slides that contains very important life lessons, or you can say Dharma teachings, that will be very beneficial to all of you. So now let us launch the PowerPoint. All right. The, you have the slideshow from the beginning. Ah, now you see the cover slide. Life lessons for happy living. Now today you have many people who are not living a happy life. They are stressed worried, restless, and so on. So, here are some very useful, beneficial life lessons that you can reflect upon and apply in your everyday life so that your life will be more happy and peaceful. Now, let us go on to the second slide. Uh, this has some very important pointers about how to have a happy life or to live happily. Now, remember the following life lessons for happy living. Now, this is going to introduce certain life lessons in a very brief manner for happy living. Now, let us go on to see what this instructions are right the brief life lessons i will explain each of them ah, there are five points here which are very very useful that actually we can apply in our life to live more happily first free your heart from hatred that is very true if you hate people or in your mind you bear anger hatred towards certain people, uh, your so-called enemies, la, people you don't like, then you will not be happy, isn't it? Uh, your mind will not be peaceful. So you have to learn to get rid of anger, ill will, and hatred. Uh, you can use various methods la, I have posted before, one of which is to practice metta bhavana, uh, the meditation on loving kindness. Uh, so this is the first uh, very good life lesson. Now the next one is free your mind from worries. Yes, many people you know, are worried over many things. They worry about their studies, about their jobs, about their families, about the outside happenings and so on. Now you see, one of the very important Dharma teachings is this that we should not let our mind go to the past and then feel regret, guilt or remorse. The past is dead and gone. So if you, you know, always go to the past, uh, regretting what you have not done or feeling very guilty for something that you have done which you should not do, then your mind is not at peace, isn't it? If you have done something wrong, which everybody has in the past, then you just know it, make the resolution not to repeat the mistakes and then make that 
aspiration or, or that determination not to repeat the mistake, but to do the good things as much as you can. And then you move on, isn't it? And then another very common reason why people worry is because the mind runs to the future. Speculating, thinking what would happen. Nobody really knows what the future is going to be like. Nobody can be certain of what is going to come to the person. right? So there's no point worrying about the future. So you have to check that the mind doesn't run to the future. You take care of the present, live, at the, live with the present, do the important things and good things in the present, today itself, uh, then the future will take care of itself. Number three is to live simply. What it means is to have a simple life. If you are, you know, living a very, very sophisticated, very complicated life, wanting this, wanting that, wanting to be this, to be that, then you'll be always, you know, restless or worried about, you know, what you want, right? And you strive so hard to get the thing, uh, uh, you work or you study with no rest, right? And then also you always want to have rich food, rich clothing, and then many, many complicated things. Uh, then your mind will be filled with restlessness, uneasiness. You will not be happy and peaceful. Just live a simple life. You have your food, you have a shelter, simple uh, house, and then you have uh, you know, just uh, sufficient money to live com comfortably. And that is a very good thing. Now you see the very peaceful and happy people like the monks and the nuns. You see how their lives are? Very simple. So are they miserable and then you know, suffer from all the problems of the mind or mental illnesses? You hardly find these sort of things, you see. Are the, the people who are living very, very complex lives wanting this or that. Then number four is about dana. That we should learn to do dana. Dana translates as charity or giving or generosity. So we practice more giving rather than always wanting to take and take and take. Right? Uh, in other words, to be filled with greed. Lah. So if we practice more and more giving, uh, then you find uh, your mind becomes very joyful that you are happy, that you have helped people, you have served people. So this is a very good point of a life lesson for happy living. Number five is to be contented. Yes, contentment is very, very important. The Buddha also talked about how contentment uh, can give you peace and happiness. Now, the opposite is to be uh, greedy, to be always wanting, never ending. Uh, when you get something after you decide, then after that you want more, just as you have a simple smartphone. Then after some time, you see your friends having another model. Then you want to buy or gain the new one. You don't have enough money. You pester your parents or, you know, you try to get the money. So the mind is always wanting, wanting, desiring for things, never contented. So how can you be peaceful in your mind? So that is a very important uh, Dharma message, uh, contentment. Now let us go on to the next slide, which is slide number four now. Right? Right, slide number four. Now, from now onwards, uh, there will be, you can say, certain statements or certain sayings uh, that help you uh, to change your attitude to a wise one, and then you will be able to have more mental peace. No one can go back and make a brand new start. Ah, that is a very important point I mentioned just now. Uh, your mind, uh, you know, uh, always going to the past, right? And wanting things otherwise. But the past is dead and gone. Uh, the thing has happened and you cannot change the past unless you use a time machine that is science fiction. Uh, uh. 
So you cannot just change what has already happened. You can't change the past already. Events have happened. Uh, things have taken place. So that's why I mentioned already that we should be careful about that. Because many people whose mind always go to the past, you know, they feel guilt, they feel remorse, regret, I should have done this, uh, I shouldn't have done that. But remember this, that anyone can start from now and make a brand new ending. Yes. So there is a saying, you know, that goes something like this. Yesterday is late and gone. Tomorrow is yet to come. Live in the present. Or oh, another way of putting it, which I came across last time, was uh, yesterday is his tree, right? Ah, uh, his tree. That means it's a memory only. Yesterday, just his tree already, you know? gone already. Just a memory. And tomorrow, which is the future, is a mystery, an uncertainty. You don't you know what is going to happen? But what matters is today. That's why. Right? The present is a gift. Ah, you know the pun, ah, the present is the gift. So make use of the present very, very wisely. Always do things now, today. Ah, don't worry about ah, uh, what is to come. Of course, you can plan and then take the action today. And when you live your present days very well, the future will take care of itself. Right, so some people you know don't do the things today and hope to have a good future. That's ridiculous, isn't it? You want to be successful in your studies to have good results, and then you start you know fantasizing, imagining, wasting a lot of time about what is to happen in the future, but you don't do your work now, like studying hard, putting a lot of effort, and so on. Then how can you have a good future when the exams come? Then you don't get good results, isn't it? Ah, so that is something very good, important, that will make your minds more peaceful, right? Now let us go on to slide number five now. Right, slide number five. Where is this? Okay. Now, it says that there are no days without pain, laughter without sorrow, Sun without rain. Ah, here, when you reflect, you see actually it refers to the eight worldly conditions. Uh, that uh, you everybody will be faced with the eight worldly conditions. Sometimes you have pleasure or happiness, sometimes you have pain, and then sometimes you have uh, gain, and sometimes you have loss. Sometimes people praise you. Sometimes people blame you. Sometimes a person gets honor, fame. Other times he's no longer famous. Uh, dishonor. So that is life, you see. So you only want all the good things every time. All the pleasures, all the praises, all the gains only you find is impossible. Uh, sometimes uh, you get the other opposite. Uh, which means that none can avoid the two sets of things, right? Which means pleasure and pain, right? Gain and loss, praise and blame. So if you know this, then you can be more patient and accept those things. That's why it gives some very good uh, words. Uh, laughter without sorrow, isn't it? It shows that uh, you must have pleasure as well as pain, isn't it? A sun without rain is just a very interesting way of saying this. But uh, if a person has this wisdom, can see this, but and you can face, uh, you can face whatever that comes. Of course, when good things come, uh, wow, very happy, you have no problem to complain. But then when unpleasant things come, some you know painful situations arise, you still have the strength, you know, uh, the strong mind to face this. So you can get comfort. Otherwise, some people, you know, when certain things, uh, you know, not so pleasant come, uh, let us say, uh, uh, these fellas lose their boyfriends or their girlfriends or the boyfriends and girlfriends run away for other people. Then, wow, you know, some uh, would even commit suicide. 
Whereas, you know, this can happen to anybody. So when you reflect this, our eight worldly conditions, so you can embrace these things more peacefully because everything will come to pass. This will pass also. Then the time will come when you, know, you get maybe new boyfriends or girlfriends already. So, night cannot be sustained all the while. Right? Night, darkness. But then the next day will come when the sun rises and you have light, isn't it? So, uh, that is the way things are. So, if you can see all these things, so your mind will be stronger and you have a wiser attitude and you find that uh, life will be more peaceful for you. You can cope with all the tribulations, the troubles of life uh, because they too will pass and you just try your best to overcome those things if you cannot, but they too will pass like a sickness, for example. Everybody gets sick. So, of course, maybe you go and see a doctor and so on. But then it will take some time before uh, the medicine works or before the body heals itself. So, eventually, also things will change, right? Ah, then you recover. So, so, if you are able to understand and see these Dharma teachings, your life definitely will be much more peaceful, isn't it? Uh, so many people uh, are impatient, they don't understand the way things are, they always well, want uh, comfortable things only, always in the comfort zone, uh, which uh, means that they cannot face unpleasant things that come. Now this is inevitable, uh, like we say. Right? So if you remember this, therefore your life uh, will be easier for you to live. Uh, uh, you embrace things uh, more peacefully. Your minds are not so, uh, or what do you call it, rattle, when things don't go the way you want. All right? Then your mind is not so shaken to the extent that you get stressed. And then after that, you know, it goes on until you develop maybe even problems of the mind like psychiatric illnesses. Uh. Ah, sickness of the mind, then that will be terrible, isn't it? So, this is also a very important life lesson that we have to reflect on, apply in our daily life. But you must have understanding first. Then this will contribute to a more happy, peaceful living. Now, let us go on to slide number six. Disappointments are like road bumps. They slow you down a bit, but you will enjoy the smooth road afterwards. Uh, this also is connected to what we have said. You cannot always uh, have what you want, isn't it? Sometimes uh, you get the things you don't want. And sometimes uh, you don't get the things you want. Uh, that is uh, natural, isn't it? Like For example, a student... Uh, sitting for the exam and he expects and he wants to have uh, maybe all A's. Uh. But then sometimes this does not happen. You have tried your best already. So you find that, oh, the, some will feel so disappointed and this goes on and then uh, some even do certain things, uh, commit suicide when they fail the exam. Uh. Uh, that is not a wise way. Uh. So it, it goes to the energy of a road bump. Let's say the car is driving a wrong road, then you have those road bumps uh, uh, that will uh, remind you to slow down uh, because it can be dangerous if everybody speeds along the road, isn't it? So these disappointments will be like, you know, the road, road bumps that you don't like. Uh, so they slow you down a bit. But you will enjoy later on. Afterwards, you have the smooth road you can carry on. Now, it's just an analogy. I remember, you know, one of the stories that uh, was told by Achan Brahm in uh, uh, Dhamma Talks. 
He said that time, you know, when you know he was training in Thailand, and sometimes uh, he, together with the other Thai monks, the young monks, they have to, you know, go from one place, and then there are trucks uh, that sometimes give them a lift. Uh, so, or sometimes they might need, you know, a truck to go to a further place. You can't really walk that far. So, uh, many monks in the trucks. So you go along the roads in the rural areas, they are not very good or smooth roads. So very bumpy. La. So when the, you know, the road is very bumpy and the vehicle goes along the road, then what happens? Uh, you, you find you can't sit still on the, the seat. No? You will sort of uh, uh, move up. You know? uh, so some of them, uh, you know, <laughs> like, you know, because of the bumpy roads, uh, they... Uh, like you know, like something like a uh, jump, not jump, like, you can't help it. Like, you just uh, uh lift it and then your head knocks against the 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 roofing of the truck. Like. Let's say the truck uh, has a, a roof and then with some bars or whatever. Uh, so your head knocks again. I remember in India I experienced this also. We were on the bus uh, and then sometimes the road uh, were very uh, were very, very bumpy, you know. So we see, especially at the back of the bus, uh, wow, then uh, you find that you suddenly uh, feel yourself uh, uh shot up, you know, uh, rising, uh, and then you hit your head against the top of the bus, you know, right? Now, many people will feel terrible, isn't it? Road bumps, uh, right? But uh, later on, you find that uh, you accept it, uh, you laugh also, isn't it? Just as what happened uh, when Ajahn Brahm said that, uh, when these uh, young Thai monks uh, bump their heads against the top of the uh, the jeeps uh, or the trucks or whatever, they laugh, you know, Whereas uh, he at first uh, he felt very disappointed, you know, uh, uh, not happy. La. But later on he also laughed and then you feel very nice. Uh. It's a very interesting sort of analogy. La, right? So that is this thing known, uh, have disappointments, bring you down for such a long period. Uh, accept it and then later on all this will pass and then you move on. But some people, you know, you know, they have certain uh, disappointments. Like say they are disappointed with their friends, they even get angry with certain friends and so on. But this actually, uh, you can get rid of and, and you know the Dhamma, you reflect and they will pass. But then some uh, let these uh, feelings of disappointment, oh, yeah, why I didn't strike the, the lottery, uh, or why I didn't get the A, uh, or, or why like this, why like that. Uh. So always uh, dwelling on the disappointed mind states, the negative mind states, stay on. Uh, that means that staying on the bump too long. You should let go of all this already. That's why some people cannot sleep. Right? Why? Because of a mind factor. They always feel anger, or ill will, or disappointment that did not get this, or disappointed with certain people. So the mind always running, running, and thinking how to be peaceful, isn't it? So that is also a very important point for you to consider a life lesson. Right. So it goes to quite similar to the eight early conditions. Huh? You have a uh, uh, pressure, pain, uh, and but this all will pass. Uh, it will change. You know, and that is life. Uh. Now let us go on to slide number seven. When you feel down. Because you didn't get what you want, just sit tight and be happy. Something better can happen. Things will change. Now, you see, you have uh, various types of suffering or what we call dukkala, right? You can see problems, conflicts, and then uh, anxiety, stress. These are all under dukkha. Sometimes you will feel dukkha, you see. So various ways when you can feel the dukkha, uh, sickness, when you're aging or so, and then when you get what you don't want, and you don't get what you want, and you meet somebody you don't like, okay? or some things that you like are taken from you, or you lose them, or they are taken away, or some people uh, rob you, or things like that, and then some, of course, your loved ones, may depart, which means some may pass away, your grandfather and so on. So, this is natural, isn't it? Dukkha is a fact of life. Sometimes you, uh, 
or don't get the things you want. You don't want your grandfather to <laughs> die, you know? but it's a fact of life. Birth, old age, sickness, and death. You can't help it. So, when you understand these facts of life, what we call the Dharma, then uh, you, your mind state changes. You can accept things better. Like when somebody blames you, there are, you know, various types of reactions that people can hold. Some are wow, very angry and react and quarrel back and fight, you know. Whereas uh, those that understand, well, sometimes the people will blame. Even the Buddha was blamed, you know, was abused, was accused. One lady accused the Buddha of making her pregnant even, isn't it? So, but the Buddha, of course, he is a Buddha, like perfect wisdom, perfect compassion. So he was so peaceful and calm, and he didn't react to this. You see? And later on, he explained uh, to the person, right, that I don't accept all that you say, the abusive words. Then those things don't belong to me. Uh, you have to take back those things. Uh. Now, so that is a very important thing. Uh, that these two will pass. Of course, if somebody blames you, you might want to reflect and say, why is it so? Is it because I have done something wrong? You reflect, and then uh, if it is true, then maybe you decide to take steps to overcome or to correct the mistakes. And it may, uh, many times, maybe it's not true. People just accuse you. You can try to explain. But if the person, uh, you know, very stubborn and uh, still angry, then why should you also get angry? If the person gets angry and then you know, uses terrible words on you, whose karma, whose bad karma is it? Not yours. It is his bad karma. But if you react and also get angry, then you also have the bad karma because of anger. And worse still, uh, when you also say the terrible words, uh, bad words also come out, you want to challenge a person. So that is not the way uh, we should live our life. We cannot be peaceful. So, I'll just tell you some of the ways you can cope. Huh? Uh, so, he just said, just sit tight and be happy. Uh, here, in, in other words, the message is uh, don't react. right? Reflect wisely. See what you can do to change the situation, to explain. You cannot be patient and you see that these two will pass. And good times will come. Right? Not always bad times or dukkha. Sometimes also you have... Uh, Worldly happiness, la. but that also will not last. So when you know this idea, uh, then uh, you find your life can be more meaningful and peaceful. Of course, then the ultimate will be to walk the path uh, that will give you no more problems, uh, no more dukkha, no more stress. And that's what, that was what Siddhartha Gautama left the home in order to seek the truth, to end all suffering, to end all dukkha. And of course, he found the way, and the way was the noble eight, uh, is the noble eightfold part, right? Now we are not actually talking on the noble eightfold part today, lah. So this is also a very important uh, lesson that is a uh, slide uh, seven, now. So now let us go on to the next one. Right? Now, of course, uh, for those of you who Prefer Bahasa, Malaysia or Malay, you can read the translations, which was basically done by Google Translate. And then I checked and edited a bit. Uh, so that is how you can improve both your English and your Malay, isn't it? Uh, to learn two uh, things at one go, isn't it? Now let us go on to slide number eight now. Whatever that happens to you may be good or bad. Right? If it is good, it brings joy. Uh, it's true, isn't it? If it is bad, it brings lessons. That means uh, we have learned a lesson. We learn from our mistakes. Actually, we won't really know when something happens, uh, it finally will be good or bad. You know? Sometimes you think it's bad, uh, but then the end, uh, it becomes a blessing in disguise. I have a Talk a few, I've given a few stories uh, uh, on this line. Uh, like there's this book uh, by Acham Brahma. Uh, good, bad, who knows? Uh, just as one of the early stories I posted was about the 
club family, all right, in this Scotland, I think, right, with the uh, many children and the wife. And at the time in Scotland, they were planning uh, to go to America on the big ship. That time was long ago. You have the type of steam ship, you know, right? So they work hard, save the money, make the preparations, book the tickets for the family, all the family members in order to sail on the particular day. But just about one week or so before, uh, one of the children of this Mr. Clark of the Clark family was bitten by a mad dog you know and he got rabies a very dangerous style of disease you cannot just go and travel really you have to be quarantined because you might spread to other people so this man was so very disappointed and say I yeah you know even uh scolded the god you know of course they uh, follow the Christian religion so they blame uh, the god why you allow this to happen and now cannot go really everything very very sad everything you no know, something bad happens you no know. so they could not go lah huh? so when the time came for the ship to sail they were just uh, watching uh, but of course not the sick boy the sick boy gonna be quarantined but the rest of them just watch the ship sail then uh, not many days later really the news came what the ship was the Titanic it sank you know and how many people died isn't it so now, luckily they didn't go. So when you know an event takes place, good or bad, you also wouldn't know. So that is the way we uh, uh, can see things of life better. Uh. So don't uh, react uh, so easily like that. Of course, when something is good, it brings joy. But if it's so-called bad, towards the end stage, you don't know. Uh, you maybe it turned out to be good. They call it a blessing in disguise. Luckily, the, I didn't go uh, on that trip uh, accident, isn't it? But even let us say if it's really unpleasant and so on, then you learn certain mistakes. Oh, you, I got that accident. Uh, I sleep and fell uh, because I kicked the big rock. Then it is a lesson for me. Oh, I'm, you cannot say it's my karma. Lah. You say I was not mindful, so I have to be more careful when I walk along the road. Otherwise, I can kick against the big stone and then fall and maybe hurt my ankle or fracture even uh, certain parts of your leg, isn't it? So that becomes a lesson. So both are useful. Whether uh, you have the good things happening to you or the unpleasant things happening to you that can teach you very important life lessons so that you will not repeat the mistake like in this case, a lack of mindfulness. Uh, no, there's a very good way to you know see things. Uh. Now, so that is slide number eight now. Now let us go to slide number nine. That's the purpose to life's events. Now, why certain things happen, sometimes you don't know the causes. There are so many causes. Uh, why certain things happen? Now, according to you know certain teachings in Buddhism, there are five sets of universal laws, or you can say natural laws. Uh, uh, they call it the niyamas, right? So these five universal laws, something like this, I just summarized. Uh, right? One is the physical inorganic. That means the laws of uh, like physics, chemistry, right? The weather and so on. Uh. So, you know very well, if you throw an apple up, uh, the apple will come down, isn't it? So that is a natural law of gravity. Then, uh, you know, sometimes uh, you know, the season is such that, uh, that the clouds gather together and then there is uh, uh, the rain and so on. So, this is uh, operating according to a law, isn't it? The, the physical inorganic. Then you have the biological laws. Like, for example, you grow a uh, mango seed. You don't expect to get a durian tree, isn't it? Right? Ah. So, for example, you plant certain things. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you expect... Uh, to get certain things. But sometimes you maybe have not watered it enough or you have not put in fertilizer or not enough sunlight. Then you don't get what you want. Uh. So maybe the, the thing doesn't grow well or it doesn't grow at all. So there are reasons, isn't it? So certain things uh, that, I mean, the things that happen in your life, uh, there are causes that you have to examine, isn't it? And the third is the, what we call the Chitta Niyama, which means the loss of the mind. Like for example, uh, you know that uh, in life, 
we should not get angry, right, or hateful because there are harmful effects. You can get uh, terrible stress until you might get stroke or heart attack, isn't it? Whereas if your mind is uh, filled with metta, loving kindness, then you get a lot of benefits. So a lot of things also we have to understand, you know, about the laws of the mind. And then you have the karma laws. Uh, yeah, the karma laws are the so certain things uh, in life events that happen, uh, that's because of karmic effects, karma, right? Like a person, you know, maybe in the past you might have done terrible things or, you know, very, very stingy, never did any dana. So this life, uh, then I find, why am I so very poor, terrible, born in the wretch, uh, wretched condition, uh, so terrible, right? But you can rise up. The things in the past influence, influence what happens now, but you can change that, isn't it? And your life, uh, actually, uh, the purpose uh, is actually to grow, right? To understand and grow in your compassion, wisdom, until finally uh, you have complete understanding of what we call the Four Noble Truths, uh, why you have all this. Uh, right? So actually, the purpose uh, of life, actually, in a way, is to say, right? To understand the four noble truths and uh, to get out of the suffering, uh, you can say. So for all those things that happen, uh, you can uh, uh, learn to smile, learn and grow. And grow, which means that you become wiser. Wisdom arises in you, right? That you say that, well, oh, there is a purpose. Uh, and certain things happen in life, then you can learn the lessons. Isn't it? So they teach you good lessons also. Ah, so this is a very important life lesson also. Now let us go on to slide number 10. You can't make someone love you. Uh, you know, uh, that is a, a fact, isn't it? Uh, sometimes, uh, I say, why is it that this uh, a girl whom I'm interested in uh, does not love me? I do all the things for her. Right, I help her everything, and people say I'm also quite good looking, ma. Oh, you can't force somebody to love you, isn't it? Uh, and neither can uh, somebody force you to love the person, isn't it? It cannot be forced, is it? There are certain reasons, you know, so many reasons also. So when you understand this, so you can accept the thing better, but you can take steps. Uh, to improve the situation, right? All you can do is to be someone who can be loved. The rest is up to the person to realize your word. Lah. I remember I had one student once. Uh, he was studying in one of the universities. He was uh, in my uh, guidance class, Form 4, Form 5, Form 6. He was a good student, quite good looking. To me, it was very, very pleasant and everything. But then later on, when he went to the universities, uh, he uh, wrote the time, uh, I think the time already there was an email. Uh, so he wrote and uh, told me that, uh, why is it uh, people don't like me? Right? I try my best also uh, to you know be helpful, to be kind, to be polite, all the qualities. But yet people hate me, boycott me. They don't allow me to join the, uh, it was the Chinese language society. Uh, and all this is miserable. Then I explained to him there are various causes. But you can't make all the, the people there like you, you see, right? So there are various reasons. One of it, maybe uh, you have certain uh, character defects or you have certain faults or uh, weaknesses to examine. You say, why is it? Is it because of my speech? Is it because that I am a bit proud? Or things like that. You say, yeah, I am. Uh, Brother, I already checked all these things. I can't find everything. Then I say there's one more cause. Uh, sometimes it's due to a past karma. In the past life, uh, certain things happen that you might have offended people. You might have, you know, say bad things against monks or what. Uh, and these things can come out in the present that you with people have no yen. Uh, people don't like you. Right? And you can't force them to like you, isn't it? So what you can do is nothing is fixed. You can change it. So what you can do is to be someone who can be loved. Huh? Nah, then I gave him uh, how you can practice the Dharma to improve yourself and so on. Do Metta Bhavana, uh, change our weaknesses. Uh, I gave him many examples. Huh? Then, if you have all those things and your karma from the past is not so heavy one, very soon, huh? uh, later, huh? you will find uh, people begin to like you already. 
he can't afford. And that's what happened to him. Later on, no more problem. Right? People could accept him because he had taken good steps of generating good karma. Ah, so that is a very good attitude. Uh, rather than always complaining. And worse still, some people uh, always find fault with others only. Uh, that might be uh, the reasons why people don't like you, don't love you, isn't it? Uh, so sometimes it happens in families also. Uh, there are some of the family members, the children, very unhappy. They say, oh, how come uh, my father, my mother hate me uh, and uh, you know don't like me, don't love me. They like me, my brother or they like my sister and so on. You know, These are very common. You know. So there are various reasons, as I say. Uh, as I said, gave you the example of the student. So this one also, you find uh, sometimes very strange. I know, I've seen family uh, where the parents uh, hate one particular child. So various reasons. One of the reasons is to look at the present itself. I will tell this one, right? Maybe you can change your ways. Maybe, you know, you should do uh, more good things and show filial piety and all the gratitude everything, right? But sometimes it's very challenging. And this could be traced to a past karma. But even that past karma is not fixed. Uh, it's always like that. If you keep on doing the good things, sir, uh, good actions of the speech, of the body, and then of your mind, you can always do meta for them and so on, things will change. And I have seen that happening also. Uh, so, uh, there's a very interesting story of the hunchback of Northern Dame. You know? uh, it was made into a movie. Uh, I don't know, you know, it it's happened in the church in uh, France. Uh, I don't know whether you know, it's a true story or, or based on the true story. Uh. You can see the movie, you can read the book, Hunchback. So in the church, uh, there was this horrible looking person, uh, ugly, uh, because it was hunchback. Uh. He would live in the church you know, because uh, you know, like nobody would want to uh, allow him to live in their home and so on. So there was this beautiful girl that used to go to the church to pray for the mass service. They are Catholics, uh, right? Catholics, uh. So at first, uh, when the, the girl uh, saw the hunchback, oh, you know, you, you're so ugly, everything. That's our usual reaction. You see the person so physically ugly, you try to avoid, you know. But then, uh, over time, uh, the weeks and the months pass, uh, that, that the girl realized that this hunchback uh, was such a good person, no? always very helpful, right? Uh, would even bring her drinks when I mean, uh, she was thirsty, very, very kind. All the good things, and then the girl uh, fell in love with the hunchback also. Uh, you cannot make somebody love you, but then uh, you see your good character has changed things. A very good story, uh, and you can see the movie also. So now let us go on to slide number 11. It's better to lose your pride and learn important life lessons than to get into trouble because you don't know the lessons. There's a very important English proverb that says, pride goes before a fall. Uh, so some people uh, fail because they are too proud to learn the things uh, that the teachers teach. Uh, that's why they say pride goes before a fall. Whereas other people, very humble, always willing to learn, paying good attention, with good mindfulness and concentration. So they are humble people, always uh, willing to learn. So you will learn very important things in it. Everybody can learn from other people. Ah, but there are people uh, because of the ego, you know, right? like for example, right? Uh, you want to learn uh, the, uh, driving, let's like, say. You say, I know already, I know already, I know this already, I know that already. La. But actually, uh, you are egoistic. You have not learned uh, many important things yet. Then what happens? Uh, you want to show off uh, pride. Uh. So you drive that moto or the car. Then you get into an accident. Uh, you not only spoil the vehicle, maybe you also hurt yourself. Why? Because you are too proud and egoistic to learn all the important things. Right, so this is also a very good thing, uh, about you know pride, right? So we must always kill the ego or the self, uh, thinking that we uh, we know already, right? 
even the the very one of the most famous or you can say the most famous scientist Albert Einstein you know he was so fantastic huh? just thinking like this he could solve the mathematical problems uh, without the time no calculator no uh, no smartphone uh. <laughs> uh, no computers even but just with the mind thinking you know and yet he was so humble you know? so sometimes you know when he supervised his uh, postgraduate students, uh, students were doing the PhD. Uh, so then the student will explain to the master, they are professor, this is like this, this is like this. Uh. Then uh, he will say, can you please slow down? I cannot understand the thing. You're so very humble. No? All right? ah, even a great scientist. Uh, so he could learn many important things. Just as uh, we can also learn from the young ones. I learned a lot from the students also. So if we are proud, then you find uh, we learn little. Right? Your ego blocks it. Just as you know, the Zen story, that person, uh, uh, very, very, you know, when you get egoistic and the mind filled with a lot of EA concept ideas, uh, he approached the Zen master. He said he wants to learn important things. But the Zen master uh, probably could read the mind. Really. He said you have to get rid of all those nonsense things in your mind. Right, uh, then only can feel with the important things. Uh. All right. So do not have this idea. I, I know a lot of things, uh, but there are a lot of rubbish also, isn't it? Could be, isn't it? Uh, so be humble, right? That I have these weaknesses. So when somebody points out to me, oh, you know, you have these thoughts and so on, you are humble enough to lose your ego, uh, to get rid of your ego, realize what are your mistakes and faults, and then now you can learn very good lessons. Otherwise, I tell you, right? if a person has great ego uh, and very proud, no humility, uh, life cannot be peaceful for him uh, or <laughs> meaningful. Uh. So you find uh, there are many uh, jokes and uh, stories also uh, that tell you about these sort of things. Uh. Just as the, you know, one day, uh, this VIP uh, uh, attending a conference in a big hall, you know, Right? But people did not know his VIP he was very, very proud. You know? So he walked in through the main door. So all those people, the ushers uh, and those in charge uh, say, uh, Sir, do you have a, a ticket? They say, no, I don't have a ticket. So they, they say, well, you cannot come in. right? So then uh, he was asked to leave, but he didn't want to leave. He thought that he was uh, very, very, uh, I mean, a big shot. Uh. So the people, the guards also in charge, uh, lifted him uh, and then went through the side door of the hall uh, to put him outside. Then he shouted, he said, you know who I am or not? I'm a Dato or Tan Sri, uh, so and so everything, you know. I'm a VIP and you do this to me, uh, so proud, you know. So then the guards, everything, uh, took him back and then uh, carried him, I mean, uh, fetched him again or lifted him uh, and then threw him out through the main door. <laughs> main door, that's a joke. Uh. Main door, you are VIP, uh, sorry, uh, it's now the... Uh, uh, chuck you away through the side door. Now you're happy you go to the go through the main door. La. This is just a joke, uh, but it tells you uh, that the person is uh, so proud, uh, so uh, you find you cannot have a peaceful life. Uh, right? He wants to be treated this way, that way, everything, isn't it? Ah, uh, so don't let the uh, pride uh, get in the way of a peaceful living. Uh, the ego uh, basically. So you see that ego actually in the teaching of Dhamma, ego is uh, a key cause no, of our dukkha. No. Self, me, my, I. Uh, you don't know, you know who I am. Uh. Why is it that I cannot get this? I, I, every time I, you know. So that is the ego and you will bring a lot of uh, unhappy feelings. And then your life cannot be peaceful because your whole life is centered on the ego, the self. Whereas the opposite is you are humble and you always uh, reach out to people. Uh, even uh, uh, you may be a professional, but then you're so humble, you can even go down to the level of the poor people and help. Then you find that your life uh, will be very peaceful, you are well liked, and you have a happy living. Uh, so that is this thing. Otherwise, uh, you find you get into trouble. Uh. <laughs> uh, now let us go on to number 12 we spend too much time looking for perfect things and people uh, let's look at this this aspect first right so let me tell you a joke first so there was uh, this girl uh, right so right 
So he told people, no, he go very strong. He said, I must look for the perfect partner. I must look for the perfect man. He must be knowledgeable. He must be handsome. And then he must know how to cook. And then he must know this, must know that. All the conditions, no. So she ran and searched and searched. Huh? I mean, for a few years, huh, she couldn't find the perfect man that she wanted in order to marry. Huh? Right? So one day, she met one man, you know. Oh, the man, huh? good looking, uh, very pleasant, right? And then could cook also and could do so many things. Wow, then he say, oh, Mr. Perfect, huh? so I think I, I found the perfect man. Huh? I want to marry you. Huh? Then the so-called perfect say, Miss, I don't want to marry you because I'm looking for the perfect girl and you are not. <laughs> ah, that is just a joke. Huh? So huh, you find that uh, all things and all people are not perfect. The Buddha, of course, is perfect. Huh? Or an Arahant, you see. But then we are not. We have so many weaknesses, defilements, and all those so-called sins. Huh? Right? So, you have to recognize this and try to improve. Huh? Right? So, if you are always uh, looking for this, oh, yeah, why is this like that? This one uh, cannot accept. Huh? God cannot accept the small mistakes also. Yeah, this person uh, very bad on uh, last time, you know what? He uh, hit somebody. Uh. Oh, yo, last time there was an incident. Uh, then uh, the fleur already uh, prejudiced against the person because the fleur said uh, he was he's bad already. It's just like as Acham Brahm said, uh, right? They have a piece of white cloth. Right? This white cloth has some black dots, uh, right? But you see, some people, uh, they only want to see the faults. Uh. Here we're coming to the, the, the next point. Uh. Finding faults with things and people. They cannot see the good things. No, Just as you look at the piece of white cloth, you only focus on the black spots. Uh. You cannot see so much of uh, whiteness you know, in the cloth. Isn't it? Who has uh, no faults? Everybody is not perfect. So then uh, when you understand this, I say, wow. All of us have faults, but many people don't see this. Uh, so say their lives are uh, not really peaceful, cannot have happy living. They uh, will point the fingers, you la, you like this one. Why are you not punctual? Why are you uh, so stingy? Always pointing the finger at other people. But as I said before, when you point your four fingers at other person, blaming the person, uh, cursing the person, or criticizing the person, three more fingers point at yourself. That means you yourself have the faults. But can you see your faults? So when you reflect on this, I say, oh yeah, very true. Huh? Right? I can see the fault of the others, but I also must realize my faults. That's why in Dhammapada, there is a verse. No? Others' faults are easy to see. But one's own faults, one hides like a fowler in disguise. A fowler will be maybe a person like a sort of a hunter. Huh? He goes to hunt for wild hens or wild fowls. Huh? Then he must hide, isn't it? Huh? Disguise himself so that huh? easier for the prey huh? for him to catch. Huh? So he said, other people's fault very easy to see. One's own fault, one hides huh? or cannot see. You know? So, so when we learn this very important Dharma teaching, huh? then our life huh, will be more peaceful Right, we can even uh, be more forgiving, more understanding, and then we admit our mistakes, but then we learn, right, the good teachings. Uh. So that is a very important thing for a happy, peaceful living. But many people always find faults with other things or other people, not knowing that nothing is perfect. And then uh, even that thing is very uh, good uh, for start a new car, but that also changes, you know. It will become uh, <laughs> not good really later after many years of uh, problem. So you don't see this. Uh, then you always feel very frustrated, complaining this, complaining that. And you live your life based on the four C's. You know, you know what? The four C's always criticize, always complain, always condemn, always curse on it. Uh, that type of life, uh, can it be peaceful? Cannot. You must live a life based on the good four C's. Always very calm, uh, and then very chari charitable, or you can say calmness, a mind of calmness, a mind of charity, a mind of confidence, a mind of clarity. The mind is so clear. Uh, you must live with these four C's. Uh, being calm, being charitable, being uh, clear in the mind, and then being compassionate. Uh, all these good C's. Uh, you say they have the 
rotten seeds. <laughs> so what we should do is we understand ourselves, our faults and departments, and then we take steps to improve. All right? And then uh, we make others happy. If you want to be happy, there's a very important Dharma teaching. You know? If you want to be happy, it doesn't mean oh, you get all the wealth, then you'll be happy. It doesn't mean you have all the power and fame, then you get happiness or peacefulness. If that's the case, uh, you won't have uh, the famous people that are uh, K-pop or Elvis Presley, Michael Jackson la, and then uh, you have, uh, you know, very famous people uh, in uh, Whitney Houston and so on uh, uh, committing suicide, isn't it? So, you want to be happy and peaceful. A very important point is try to make others happy. You make others happy, actually you're cutting the ego or you're reaching out to people, isn't it? So, that is contributing towards your happy living and the peaceful living rather than spend your time only criticizing, condemning, cursing, uh, um, and then, uh, you know, complaining. Uh, so that is a very important point for you to learn. Now let us go on to number 13. Uh, this is about friendship. And it's very, very important. I posted a few posts uh, on friendship. You know? right. Now let us look at the ordinary situation before I tell you about the Dharma teaching by the Buddha of a, a friend. Uh, right. Now, you never simply abandon an old friend. Now, friendship is very important. We cannot live alone. We need good friends, isn't it? But unfortunately, today, it's not so easy to find good friends. But then there are people that maybe have good old friends. But then, you know, these people don't value, don't cherish the good friends. Then a time comes when wow, they find out oh, maybe uh, wow, well, this girl very pretty uh, or this man very handsome. Uh. So they try to look for friends based on these external appearances. You know? Oh, this girl very rich. You know? oh, this girl has how many cars? You know? All these are not the wise criteria. We should be asking whether that person is helpful, is of good character, right? And uh, you know that person is very understanding. All the good qualities, no. Well, they find the friends based on how pretty the flirt is, how healthy the flirt, uh, so how rich the flirt is, how many cars, how many houses, all those things, uh, or how many degrees he has, how famous he can be a pop star or not. That sort of things, uh, you find that, uh, that are, those are not uh, really true good friends. Uh. Of course, there might be people who, who can be having good qualities as well. Uh, but I'm talking about general principle. So, so they, you know, they abandon, uh, they leave, uh, they say bye-bye to their old friends uh, who have all those good qualities. Uh, because you will regret. You may never find one who can take his place already. Friendship can be like wine. It gets better as it grows older. So if you nurture and cherish the good friends, uh, then uh, wow, you find uh, the relationship becomes even stronger and happy, more happy and so on. Uh, so you have to value the good friendship, cherish and nurture them. Now in the scriptures, uh, once uh, the disciple uh, Venerable Ananda uh, told the Buddha, he said, uh, in order to practice well, uh, then we uh, must have a friend and 50% uh, of our holy life, of our life uh, as a monk uh, depends on having a good Friend, you know, the Buddha said, Ananda, you should not say that. It's not just 50%. It's 100% uh, to be successful in walking the Dharma path, uh, to have a very, really good friend. And that one is called Kalyana Mita, a spiritual friend who can benefit you and guide you. So the Buddha emphasized uh, the importance of a good spiritual friend. So likewise also, we must... Uh, Remember, never abandon or forget. Uh. Some uh, never see the friend already out of sight, out of mind, you know. Then until one day, the world face so many problems, nobody can help really. Then he thinks back, wow, last time this person was so helpful and tries to contact him. And there's a great problem trying to contact him already. But now with the Facebook, uh, <laughs> so easy to search and then he might be able to locate the person. So you may never find one who can take his place. Uh. Uh, so this is a very good point in the sense that you begin to find good friends 
nurture or cherish the good friendship and good friends uh, will contribute to having a good life, a happy life. Uh, to our good, happy living, uh, you can't live alone unless you are cultivated monks and go to the forest and meditate. Uh. But ordinary people, uh, you need a family, you need uh, good friends and so on, isn't it? Ah, so that is this very important point. So now that we have come to the end, that is the 14th slide already. Ah, so it reminds you that we have to learn all these life lessons that I've just discussed. Right? I've discussed many of the life lessons already, explained to you, have given examples. So if you learn not only learning, actually, as you say, and you learn and apply all these life lessons. Uh, if you're learning just like for subjects to get A, uh, then it's also useless. Uh. So here it would imply that you have to learn and practice. Then the miracle happens. Miracle happens doesn't mean a God coming from the heaven and then uh, put a wand over your head and say, wow, just a Harry Potter, Harry Potter movies or what. Uh, wow, you get what you want. And it's not like that. It's a happy living comes. Because you have used and uh, you have applied and after learning the life lessons, so it's a miracle. And that miracle is happy living. And this happy living comes uh, not only once only, because uh, you grow with the life lessons. Every day you experience the happy living. Every day you experience, every moment or so, uh, you experience the happy moments, peaceful moments. So you see, uh, these are the very important things you have to bear in mind. Now, I've spoken for more than an hour already. So before we say sadhu three times, so I would like to thank all the students or boys and girls. These are more suitable perhaps for suitable, uh, secondary students. Some primary students in the six maybe can understand also. Uh, youth members, uh, and also even young adults also uh, very important in fact I feel that everybody also I also learn from this also is it uh, even though it's supposed to be for the students and so on so uh, I would like to thank all you young people students youth members or even the parents grandparents who are following and the teachers of Dhamma classes so sadhu to all of you for taking time to follow this presentation, you have spent your not only your time, uh, you have also used the energy uh, to follow this with mindfulness and concentration. So sadhu to all of you. So now let us pull our palms together and say sadhu three times. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Uh, brothers and sisters in the Dharma and all those who are following this presentation, right? may you all be well, happy and peaceful and may you apply the life lessons so that you will have a happy living. Uh, thank you and sadhu. Take care.